It's a family. We're at Sebring, the Mobile One 12 Hours of Sebring. What is Sebring known for? The bumps. Respect the bumps. Bumpiest racetrack on planet Earth, and we love it. We see all the great slow motion footage of cars bouncing, you know, turn 17, turn one everywhere. What's the engineering behind getting a race car to do this and survive and succeed? Going over the bumps for 12 hours, quickly, safely, performance wise, how do you do that? We're going to start off by talking with our friend, man, you are sexy guy, Jeff Fickling, oh, race engineer here, the Vassar Sullivan Lexus team here, defending race winners as number 14. Lexus RCF GT3. Jeff, tell me about mindset for you as a race engineer. This track is unlike any other where you not only go forward, seemingly you go up, up almost as much. How do you manage that? What's a mindset from a race engineer standpoint of tuning this Lexus? I mean, we got a lot of adjustments we can make on the car to, to try to optimize its performance over the bumps. Um, Obviously, there's more than just the bumps to the, this circuit itself, but we know the bumps aren't going anywhere, you know, so it's the same for everyone. Um, biggest thing is just trying to optimize your contact patch and, you know, the, the loading that you have over it. Um, Keep those the, tires the, on the, ground as much as possible. For sure. I mean, if it's it's where the rubber meets the road, right? That's the, the foundation of grip, and that's how you go around the corners and brake as fast as possible. So, um, you know, keep taking that mindset and applying it to to what we have is kind of what we, what we do, but... Beyond that, it's um, it's recovering over the bumps. It's uh, you get, the curb strikes are a big deal here too. Recovering off those curves, making sure we're not up in the air, we're we're down on the ground, and um, and controlling our ride height. You know, because it's it's uh, the foundational component of grip as well. Is the downforce? The lower you are, the, the dynamically, the more downforce you're going to create. The lower the CG, the faster you can go through the corners. Get that center and, of gravity um, down as much as possible. And, so with a GT car, very different from a prototype, we're going to learn about that from another team, but you have a car with a higher center of gravity, weighs a little bit more. These bumps want to just throw cars up into the air. I'm sure you and your team, the TRD side as well, spent a lot of time on damping, right? The spring rates, the actual dampers themselves, those are wanting to help, what are helping to manage these cars over the bumps. Is there a, a perfect formula you found over the years to ride the bumps but go quickly? You don't want it to be like an old slushy car from the 60s and 70s. What's the balance? For sure. I mean, there's a lot more body roll in these cars than you'd see in a prototype or an Indy car. Um, but at the same time, we're trying to control it as much as we can. Um, in GT racing, too, there is a minimum static ride height rule. So you, can't, you can't run the car any lower than a certain right height um, to go through tech without the car dynamically on the track so the trick is to try to get it as low as you can uh, dynamically um, for as much of, as you can uh, as possible so um, but everything works together I mean every test day that we have here is, is it gives you uh, a lot more opportunities in the race weekend to sweep different adjustments and everything from the damper clickers themselves to spring rate to bump rubbers and packers and the gaps that go along with them, geometry settings, um, camber, cambers and toes and tire pressures and <laughs> aero and all that stuff. This is a um, matrix working in your head know, at and, all times. And, and they all work together. And they all work together with a human that's driving it. And his feedback's just as important as, as, any, as the data that we collect. So it's, it's, uh, it's a matter of absorbing the bumps and providing a car that's, that's really, it's got a good platform for, for performance on track, but it's also a forgiving car that allows the driver to have the confidence to go out and push. And, um, and commit to some of these really high speed daunting corners like a turn one, a turn 17. Uh, there's, there's quite a few more that, um, you know, when you just stare at them, you're like, wow, it's, it's, it's a, a proper corner. And, uh, and then you see them go through their speed and it confirms that it is, you know? Wow. So, um, but you know, we've been running this car for quite a few years. I think it's the, it's the oldest GT car on the grid now. So we do have a lot of experience with it. Um, we've swept every adjustment that, that's, that's possible. So we, we've got a good knowledge base, um, but every year is different, um, you know, and then certain things change, conditions change, um, driver lineups change, you know, BOP is adjusted, uh, tire can change, like last year Michelin came in with a new tire, so that was something new to, to understand and, and, and optimize. Um, so it's, you know, every year it's a, it's a new challenge, and at the end of the day, then you have 12 hours to go out and try to be there at the end and 50 or 60 other crazies out there to fight with. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned data. 
So we've got lots of beautiful B-roll of cars flowing over the bumps and you can see how amazing it happens to be and how much movement takes place. Yeah. Why don't you go take a look at a little slice of data just so folks can see the little squiggly lines of everything's going normal and boom, here's a big, yeah. big bump. Let's go take a look. Sounds good. So Jeff, you've been kind enough to show us here a slice turn one. We think it turned 17 so much and they're crazy bumps there as well. You can launch to the moon if you're not careful, but turn one, boy, there are definitely some big ripples. Tell us what we're looking at here. And we see this big seismic shift here. I assume that's where we start to have the real fun parting vertically. Absolutely. I mean, you got, we're zoomed in here. This is turn one. So you got the speed trace at the bottom, um, which is ground speed. And then you have your throttle trace here. So up here, your full throttle, off, off the throttle here on the brakes into turn one. And this is when you pick it back up and there's full throttle there. And then you have your right rear damper travel up top. So that's essentially the, the wheel travel that you're seeing. Um, and that show, over that's, the that's a visual rep representation through data of the movement. This is measuring the movement of the right rear damper, which is with this car moving. And then you start to see these big seismic ripples. And so while we get to see the beautiful, again, footage of the car, slow motion yeah. and sexy and bouncing and such, this is the actual visual representation through data of what that is like. What you see is we're, we're full throttle here and still going over these gnarly bumps <laughs> you know, on exit. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a ride for sure, but the driver needs to be committed enough on throttle to, to have lap time here and produce that. And that starts with the commitment to full throttle on exit, even though it's a not, not a long run to turn three, um, you still got to ride right through these bumps. Some of that is the exit curbing, but the track itself is, is also very bumpy. And then you also mentioned here to close, so we're talking about some of the greatest bumps and such. Well, even on the straightaways, Jeff, there's still a lot of vertical movement, right? Oh, for sure. I mean, this, you see the, the throttle trace here, whenever we're full throttle, that's essentially a straightaway. That's how we view them. And I mean, you got, this is the run to turn seven here. You got some pretty nasty bumps on the straightaway itself before the brake zone. Same thing going into turn 10, um, over down at the, the short course there. And, uh, uh, it's yeah, it's a super super bumpy circuit. We call you a race engineer. I think sorcerer of speed might be more accurate because making these things live and go quickly and win here at Sebring a huge challenge, but one that you have obviously met with the Vassar Sullivan Lexus team. Scott Best, race engineer for one of our favorite members of the paddock. That being Spike, the magical LMP2 car. Unlike our friends at Vassar Sullivan Lexus, which have a vehicle that's bigger, rolls more, something a little more pliable. You've got a race car that is highly dependent on aerodynamics. You need to have a stable aerodynamic platform beneath the car to make the downforce, but you also have these crazy bumps. What's the challenge for you of trying to stay low and stable, and then the track saying, no, we're gonna shoot you up in the air a bunch? It's all about compromise here for us. Obviously, like you said, we want the aero platform to be as stable, as low, as efficient as it can be. But we also have to protect the driver's spine, protect yeah. the floor of the car, just wear and tear on the car in general. It's still a 12 hour race. It's a long time to get through at a place as rough as Sebring. So we spend a lot of time sort of compromising on what is a bump that moves the wheel versus what is a bump that moves the chassis. And some of that we can differentiate. Some of that we just have to accept that we're going to get some chassis movement out of it. So you were telling me that turn one is actually a place that is now with the crazy high speeds that are being carried through there. Turn 17 is the one we all know of cars bouncing through, but turn one, the car that needs to be low and stable and whatnot like this, turn one's a real challenge. Yeah, because the speed we carry, it's a fifth gear corner for us, 235, 240K. The car is making you know double its weight and downforce at those speeds, so it's quite low to the ground. So the exit bump is it's a big moment for us. Uh, definitely a lot of damage to the car you can do there. Not a lot of good opportunity for runoff in turn one. We're 17, you have a little more opportunity to get out of it if you need to. So yeah, turn one is a big problem. Tell us about turn 17 though. It's still a thing. Oh yeah. Depending on the line you take, if you notice folks are taking an inside line, there's some wicked bumps there. There's no place you can really escape but there are some pathways that are a little friendlier than others. 
you coach your drivers, if possible, to take an optimal line through there in terms of bumps? Absolutely. So we try to only run the unloaded tires through the bumps through turn 17. And since they're unloaded, the car actually will absorb the bump much better than a turn one where the car is fully loaded when it gets to the bump. Now it's time to take a look at some data here of Spike. Can't wait to see what we're seeing. We expect a lot of, a lot of wings, a lot of movement here. And we're also very fortunate to have Spike who's joined us in turn 17 here, help us try and measure some of the bumps as well. So on top we have some frequency data. You know, all things sort of vibrate in space. So this is the amount of vibration we see in the car. As you can see, it's pretty rough. Uh, this line here is damper velocity. And our bottom lines here are loads through the car, front and rear. So one thing at Sebring we look at a lot is frequency content, how peaky and how many peaks we have in the frequency graph. And then the other thing we think about a lot is transmissibility. Is the car absorbing the bump or is the suspension actually rising the chassis? So here's a good example of that. You know, big oscillation, so the suspension's moving violently, but the car itself doesn't hardly move. And then we get to a bigger bump where the suspension moves up and down quite a little bit, but the car itself is also moving. And this is kind of the compromise we make you know, we can't always keep the car here. Sometimes we have to accept that it's gonna be here. How much of one or the other is more important is kind of the game. Interesting aspect as well, Scott, knowing that with load cells in all four corners, the push rods or the suspension, you're measuring weight live as the car's going each lap. You know when you're seeing weight on all four corners, that means the car's on the ground. This track also, you'll get some zero moments. Can you tell folks about that? Because when you're going from full load to nothing, that means one part or all the entire car is up in the air. Luckily, with the amount of downforce that this car makes, almost always the tires are on the ground. We do get pretty close to a zero load here, but even then, that's still probably 200 kilos worth of load. But it's definitely a thing we consider, trying to keep the tire on the ground, keeps the tire happy, gives grip for the driver to do his job basically makes everybody happy. Watch us this season on NBC and Peacock. Be sure to subscribe to IMSA on YouTube and enjoy our brand new IMSA Endurance Hour podcast. And if you're interested in digital activation and motorsports, visit IMSA.com slash partnership.